Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. We are continuing to work with our wave function evolver. Uh, this code helps us study quantum mechanical systems by taking in a potential energy and an initial wave function. Uh, the potential energy that we're looking at in this case is a uh, it is an x squared potential energy, so it's this U shape. Uh, classically, you'd expect the particle to roll back and forth, and that's exactly what the wave function does, or the probability density here in white does, is it rolls back and forth. Um, the initial wave function that we're giving it is this Gaussian shape that starts off to one side, and that's what gives it sort of the, the, the initial pull, if you will, to oscillate back and forth, back and forth. If you were to follow the peak of this thing, you'd see that it goes like a sine or cosine, uh, just like you'd expect a classical harmonic oscillator to do, it would be to go back and forth like a sine and cosine. Um, so this is really interesting. Uh, we've, gotten into, we've gotten it to behave pretty well uh, with our normalization. I did a little bit of testing earlier, and uh, it's staying uh, normalized to within about 5%, so we'll take that as our standard, because I think the code is moving at a, at a pretty good speed right now. And so another type of fun, uh, uh, another type of wave that we might be interested in would be what's called a stationary state. So if I take off this plus 0.5 here, I end up with a very special state. It's got some constants out in front to take care of the normalization. But this Gaussian shape, if I center it at zero, uh, it turns out that that function uh, is going to keep a stationary or constant um, probability density. So the white here, the, the wave function modulus squared, stays the same, right? So the, the, the imaginary and the real parts are going to oscillate back and forth, but they're oscillating in such a way that they always combine to be the same thing. The reason for this is if you go back to the Schrodinger equation, we've got the just the right psi and just the right u uh, such that the two derivative with respect to position here and the single derivative with respect to time here uh, make the, 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 the modulus squared constant. So it's like, just like you see in the animation here, the real part and the imaginary part are gonna be oscillating back and forth. It's, it's a lot like, and in fact it's based on the same math as um, if you remember, if you take sine squared of something plus cosine squared of the same thing, you always get one. In fact, it's the same reason here because these things are built on uh, some sines and cosines. They're always adding up to the same thing here. Now, that wasn't happening when we had the wave displaced over this way because then those sines and cosines are not so nicely aligned, but right now they are. Now, this function here is special because it's the lowest energy stationary state of the harmonic oscillator of this u equals x squared, which means this is the lowest energy state you can possibly get. Any other state you build is going to have a higher energy than this one. Um, we can look at other uh, stationary states. In between episodes, I went ahead and looked up a few of them um, just because I didn't want to have to figure them out on camera. Um, so they've got similar uh, normalization constants out front. Uh, they've got the e to the negative x squared over two. <clears throat> But the main thing that changes is they add in a polynomial function in the middle. So the so this this first one we looked at was sort of the zero level uh, polynomial, uh, uh, which is, so it's got a x to the power of zero, so that's a constant. This is the first level, and so that gives x a power of one. The next one that we'll look at is the second level, and that gives x as a power of two. So it's going to always give x uh, a, a power of whatever the level is, so zero, one, two, etc. And if we take a look at the next stationary state, so here's the uh, uh, sort of, the, if you will, the first excited state or state number one, it's got a little bit different shape. So overall, it still has the exponential decay shape, right? Because things have to, the probability density has to go away as you go toward plus and minus infinity because it's becoming increasingly less likely, increasingly less likely, decreasingly likely that the particle will be found out there. Um, but in the meantime, it takes on this polynomial shape. Uh, now, currently, uh, the the wave function has this x shape, so you can see it kind of has this linear trend in the middle here. When you take real part plus imaginary part, or excuse me, real part squared plus imaginary part squared, you get the white part here. So before we had a single uh, anti node, now we've got two anti nodes. Uh, so the number of anti nodes is going to go up with the uh, with the energy level. And again, this is a stationary state, so the the probability density, the white curve, is staying roughly stationary, right? Within the uh, within the tolerance of the <clears throat> program, it's staying, you know, within 5%. But notice most importantly, it's not moving left and right. It's not a traveling wave. 
Uh, you can get the same thing, or not the same thing, you can get a similar thing. Uh, if you take the next step, we're going to go up to the next stationary state. This one involves an x squared. So this one's going to be even more interesting. Um, you can see we get this sort of x squared shape in the middle that's then modified by the decaying exponential on the side. And now we get one, two, three antinodes. And again, the stationary state, excuse me, the, the, <clears throat> the stationary state is giving us a pretty constant uh, probability density. You know, it's, it's, it's heaving up and down a little bit uh, just because of the uh, lack of precision in the code. But the, the, the most important thing is that it's not moving left and right. Now I can turn one of these uh, stationary states into a traveling state if I just move it over by a little bit. So <clears throat> we've already seen that with the, with the first level, the, the, the zero level. Let's do that with the next level. Uh, let's move it over to the left by 0 0.5. And then I have to do the same thing to this x over here, right? So we're gonna move this over by 0 0.5. Whatever I do to one x, I have to do to the other one. And what you'll see now is at the very beginning, it's gonna have that same uh, you know, up and down shape just displaced, and then we'll see it travel again to the left and right. <clears throat> Okay, cool. So you see we got the same type of shape at the beginning. Now it's moving left and right. And the neat thing about this is, is that it's maintaining the same type of shape, just moving that shape left and right. The red and green are doing some interesting stuff. Um, you know, they're sort of trading off maxes and mins with each other. But again, the important thing is that the red thing squared plus the green thing squared, well, which by now you know is real part and imaginary parts each squared, uh, keeps this profile the same. It's just moving that profile left and right. So that's another reason these uh, these stationary states are so interesting is because you can displace one off to the side and all it's going to do is move in a nice coherent way. I'm using that word coherent uh, intentionally there. Um, let's see what happens if we do the same thing with our size zero here. So now this is going to get even more interesting. Uh, we're, we'll displace the whole thing over to the uh, over to the uh, over to the left by 0.5 again. Let's see what happens when we do this. So again, we should see the same profile just moving left and right. Okay, so this one it's it uh, you know it's 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 moving along here. You can see the jaggedness really come out here. So maybe I should uh, I, I want to change that in x value, but I don't want to mess up my normalization tolerance. And again, there, you know, they're moving, you know, along to the left and the right. The behavior on the real part and the imaginary part is really wild and interesting. But the thing is, you can't measure the real part and the imaginary part. The white part is the part that you measure the distribution of the particles as they're moving along. Now, I used that word coherent earlier because coherent states uh, are a really important thing in physics. These are where you take a summation of all of the uh, harmonic oscillator states uh, and you add them together and they have some really neat properties. Uh, one of my professors in grad school is a is a champion of, of coherent states. Um, let's actually, let's have a little bit of fun here. Let's see what happens. I haven't tested this yet. Let's see what happens if we use all three of these, meaning we take one, add it to the next, add it to the next. Um, now let's uh, go ahead and add on the plus point of five here. So I've got my stationary states. They've all had, uh, they've all been displaced to the left by 0.5. So that, so if I add all these together, they won't be a coherent state, strictly speaking, uh, but they will, uh, but it, it will take the sort of, uh, sort of the form of one because you have to sum up an infinite number of them, and I don't feel like doing that. Uh, it would be a really long video. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, okay, the the initial psi is set to this, but now please add on this function, and then please add on to that this function. Let's see what we get here. <clears throat> okay, so you see we kind of get the same type of shape that we've had before. You know, we've got sort of this linear fashion here, uh, or not linear. We've got, you know, these well-defined nodes and anti-nodes. And basically what's happening now is that we're sort of transferring the weight of the function from one uh, uh, area to another. Again, the red and green are sort of trading off weightings, but then sort of the, the, the stuff, the probability is shifting sort of from one anti-node to another. You can see we're kind of getting these anti-nodes out. It's not like the thing is moving, you know, nice and smoothly. It's like there's a lump here, and then it trades weight with a lump here, and then it's going to trade weight with a lump over to the left here. But again, 
Because these things are nice stationary states, this thing is going to be able to, uh, you know, repeat itself fairly regularly, right? So we get, we're going to get this shape back uh, pretty soon. Right? So we go through the middle lump, then we go through the left lump. Lump has so fewer syllables than antinode, doesn't it? And then it goes to the middle antinode, and then it's going to go back to the original shape. So this thing, we can spot the repetition uh, pretty easily. If I did, oh, I don't think that's normalized though. Oh yeah, normalization is three because I added three normalized functions together. Again, that's not a problem. You just have to take this picture and, uh, you know, divide everything by three. Well, divide this one by three, divide each of these by square root of three, but you get the idea. Um, so that's a lot of the fun stuff we can do. Um, I can also give this thing a function that is not a stationary state or not related to a stationary state. Let's see what happens if we give this thing a psi i0 of, let's see, uh, let's make this a little bit different. We want, we need a function that dies off to either side, uh, but let's see what happens if it's not this, you know, e to the negative x squared. Let's try exponential x to the, uh, excuse me, e to the, no, yeah, e to the negative x squared. Let's try e to the negative x to the fourth. Let's see what happens if we do this here. Uh, let's run the code. So it's got the same type of initial shape, but you notice it does not stay uh, uh, in that shape, right? Whereas before it kind of kept that same shape. What it's doing now is it's sort of breaking up into its constituent stationary states, right? So the 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 wave function likes to be built out of stationary states. So what's happening is this thing that was this nice peak is developing all these other uh, anti-nodes along the way. Um, I wasn't too off by the normalization, 1.5, that's not bad. Um, and so what's happening is, is it's spreading out, it's becoming more wave-like, and then it's gathering back together, becoming more particle-like. And you could play around with that a little more. You can make that a higher power. So let's say, let's make that to the sixth power. And of course, as I do that, my jaggedness is increasing because I'm not capturing all the nice uh, wave function behaviors there. But again, you know, it's, it's, it's periodic, so it is going to eventually return to that original shape. Um, another fun one might be, uh, you know, I, I just need this thing to be, you know, to be dying down in both directions. Another way I could do this would be absolute value of x. That would be a lot of fun. A five. So this one's kind of fun because it's got a cusp there in the middle. Uh, so this thing is writhing. Um, <laughs> now it's becoming a little bit more jagged. And so one of the questions you might ask of a quantum mechanics problem is how long does it take for the wave function to return to its original shape? Because the thing is periodic, it's going to eventually return to its original shape. It got pretty close there. Uh, so that would be another thing that you could look for. So uh, while this thing is is writhing and seizing over there, uh, uh, I will say uh, goodbye and call it a day. Uh, next time we're going to take a look at some different potential energies, uh, see uh, how how changing the landscape changes the time evolution of our wave function, and uh, after that we'll start working more with the actual hardware of the code and uh, taking a look at if we can get this thing to run into spatial dimensions. So thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.